Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Horseman, Data Evangelist with Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will discuss navigating a, the data jungle, catalogs, glossaries, and dictionaries explained. And today we are sponsored by Metaphor. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you would like to chat with us or chat with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. And to note, Zoom chat defaults to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely switch that to network with everyone. For questions, we'll be collecting them by the Q&A section. To find the chat in the Q&A panel, you may find the icons for those features in the bottom middle of your screen. As always, we will send a follow-up email within a couple of business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me pass it to Kirit from a word from our sponsor, a metaphor. Kirit, take it away. Well, thank you, Mark. Um, I'm just going to share my screen real quick and let me know if folks can see it. Yep, we can see it. Perfect. Thank you. So uh, thank you all. Uh, really excited to be uh you know, talking to you guys today, and of course, really excited to hear Bob's uh, presentation as well. Um, my name is Kirit. I'm the head of product at Metaphor Data. Uh, we are a social platform for data. And if you're wondering what the heck that means, uh, I'll tell you a story just to sort of set up here, right? So early days when we were, uh, you know, talking to early customers uh, while building this product, uh, we basically, you know, spoke to C-levels, execs at different companies and basically said, hey, we're building a catalog and it's kind of unique and different. And the first thing they'd say is like, wait, why are you building a catalog? Catalogs are where data goes to die. We're like, wait, what are you, what are you talking about? What does that mean? So like, yeah, well, we, we paid, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for very expensive catalogs. I won't name names, but, you know, you can fill in the blanks. Uh, we spend months and months training up our people, and then no one except for the data team cares about it. Like, there's hardly any usage. And we were like, yep, that's exactly the point. Like, that's exactly why we're building this. And so when we say social platform for data, what we truly are talking about is a way for a catalog to be useful to pretty much everyone in the company. So yes, of course, the data team gets a lot of value and they can sort of, you know, I'll, I'll show you in a little bit the types of things we do, but all the usual governance and all of that type of stuff you can uh, do within the catalog. But we also appeal to, let's say, the analyst population who's looking for best queries that they care about or the business users who are looking for just an answer to the question like, hey, how do we define such and such, you know, name, name the glossary term that you kind of care about. And so that that's that's the whole point about why metaphor exists. We we are here to make sure that catalogs have uh, are basically applicable to everyone in the organization and not just the data team. Um, I'll show you one more slide and I'll, I'll show you a very quick preview of uh, the application that we we actually developed. Uh, but here here are some of the overarching areas that we sort of work with, our central pillar, so to speak. So of course there's search and discovery. That's that's kind of bread, bread and butter for all catalogs. Uh, we do a lot with search and discovery. So of course there's all the traditional ways to search, but then also there's a whole bunch of things around AI based search. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that as we go along. Um, data governance is obviously a big thing. We've got customers right from folks who have you know old school data warehouses. They've just modernized and they're still sort of coming to terms with working on the cloud all the way to people on the cutting edge of developing uh, you know, data products in their data mesh uh, architecture. Uh, so we help people with governance all across the board there. Um, it is, at the end of the day, it is still a power tool for the technical folks. So all the detailed things around like impact analysis, column level lineage, et cetera, et cetera, we have that within the catalog. But of course, for the sake of this particular webinar, where we're talking about you know uh, glossaries and dictionaries, et cetera, data literacy is actually a really important thing for lots of organizations, right? Like be, be the, the standard sort of uh, concerns we hear all the time is like, okay, great. You want me to go out and document stuff? Guess what? No one cares about it. It's the most boring thing. We don't like doing it. And that's one of the many reasons that the catalogs don't get used by people. And that's something we take really, really seriously. We really believe that 
people, uh, we, we understand that people don't like to do documentation, so we make it really easy for them to do it. Uh, but we also have a couple of uh, unique ways to capture institutional knowledge about data and things of that sort. Uh, essentially to make it such that people all across the board can participate without really having to be trained on the catalog and, and do things like that. So with that, I'm going to show you a very quick preview of uh, our, our tool. So I'm going to start the journey of the catalog, not in the catalog, right? So here's a standard you know, Slack channel. This could be Teams. We support that as well. So think about a scenario where your business users or your just data users, uh, they usually end up you know, writing questions to the support channel on, on Slack and say, hey, who can help me with this? Or where do I find details for such and such? Or what's the definition of such and such? So one of the things you'll see here is we have a natural language search, which basically is looking through all the metadata that we have within the catalog and presenting answers. So people can basically self-serve answers for themselves uh, around a whole variety of uh, topics. So certainly things like, you know, who are contacts for stuff, uh, you know, like what table has such and such information, what's the definition of things, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of answers that can come out of the system. Uh, this, for example, is literally a glossary term that exists within the document. So it's pulled that out and presented the answer. But here's the other thing. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, I, I'll show you just this simple example. Think about a scenario where your team is talking about some asset, right? Like they're they're talking about a new metric they're developing and there's a huge days long conversation that's going on about this. Just hypothetically, just assume this is like days long conversation thread. And at the end of that, someone says, okay, you know what? We should document this. And then promptly everyone forgets or writes a very minimalistic version of the documentation. But all that rich context about the discussion of how you came to this decision, et cetera, is basically missing. And this becomes a real problem for, you know, in terms of documentation. And so one of the capabilities we have is uh, we allow you to basically create a, we call it a post, uh, and um, essentially use AI to summarize this discussion, right? So it'll, AI does really well with these kind of things. It'll summarize and give you a quick update on all of these things. Uh, and it allows you to specifically go out and you know target a, a dashboard or a data set or a domain or what have you and persist it within the catalog. So literally within a few button clicks, you can persist institutional knowledge that usually you've never done properly before, right? So, so that's another one of those things where we, we try to meet users where they are by living in the, in the applications that they care about. By the way, I'll, I'll mention we have a great population of users with most of our customers who usually don't even go into the Metaphor app. Their interaction with the app is just through a couple of these things I mentioned. Uh, so so that's, that's kind of one of those things, right? Like hardly any training required. Now, of course, if you are a uh, data user and you do want to get into the nitty gritty details, there's a lot to be done over here, right? So I, I'm giving you a very, very quick idea here. We've got a, a, a table within Snowflake that we're looking at, lots of technical metadata, quality related stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of lineage, all the gory technical details you'd need, you know, column level lineage included. Uh, but you'll see on the right-hand side, here are all the conversation threads that, that are happening about it. People talking about data, persisting knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All of this is pretty much instantaneously available uh, available via the AI search that I mentioned. So I can you know, search for any types of stuff. Uh, I, have a, I have a silly example here. We were working with one of our customers in Germany. Uh, th their glossary, for example, happens to be in German. So they've persisted all of that in German. And so they can ask questions in their language of choice and we can you know, point them to the right sources as well. Uh, so, so that's kind of you know one of those things. The last thing I'll mention is uh, in terms of glossaries, uh, we we find glossaries are just one of many types of artifacts people care about, right? So people have metrics, they might have data stories, FAQs, et cetera, et cetera. So we we allow people to develop any kind of sort of documentation within the platform. Uh, there's a lot uh, you can do, like what you're looking at here is essentially like a live wiki of sorts. So certainly a lot of, 
you know, uh, so that, like rich media, uh, images, videos, etc. You can add the rate mention tables and they automatically kind of link together. But here's another one of those things that we constantly hear from customers is we don't like to document stuff. And what we've seen for real is, is a lot of our customers will have uh, glossaries. They might have like, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of business terms, but literally all of them or most of them are uh, basically a single line or two, right? Like, oh, uh, just for example, LTV over CAC, right? So uh, lifetime value over customer acquisition cost, there literally might be a one or two line description of what that kind of means. Uh, but here's another one of those things we could do is if you hit this create with AI button, we're looking at all the context that we have and we use AI to basically come up with a suggestion for what else you can talk about in the glossary. Now, is this 100%? No, but it's a starting point, right? It gives you a lot more color, a lot more richness and connections to actual data elements that you have within uh, within the tool as well. So I'll, I'll stop there. Short of it is there's a whole bunch of capabilities I've shown you, like the data literacy oriented stuff. And obviously we have you know a whole bunch of other capabilities over there as well. Uh, happy to talk uh, offline on, on the chat and, and certainly hit us up for a demo if you'd like to learn more. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Kirit. Uh, now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher emeritus of the data administration newsletter, tdan.com. Bob was recently awarded the DEMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will hand the floor to Bob to start his presentation. Hello and welcome, my friend. Hey, Mark. Hey, uh, Karit. Thank you and thank Metaphor for, um, for sponsoring the webinar today. Can you hear me and see my screen okay? You sound and look wonderful as always, Bob. <laughs> look, they tell me I have a face for these types of no no face webinars. But thank you everybody for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend to either attend this webinar live or to watch the recording that everybody will be sent who signed up for the webinar. This is a great subject. I know I say that all the time uh, for the webinars, but when Shannon and I are putting together lists of topics for the years, they just always seem to be really important right at the time that, that the topics come up. And we schedule these things a year out in advance. Um, this topic is really near and dear to me because it's kind of interesting. Back in, as I was, um, as I was younger in the industry and I focused on metadata management. People in my company called me Mr. Metadata. I don't know, Mark, if you knew that, but they called me Mr. Metadata, but they used it as kind of a negative term because it was like, oh, that's all Bob talks about is, is metadata. Um, and we didn't even call them data catalogs back then. We called them we called them metadata repositories. But we the, the concepts of glossaries and dictionaries were around back then. I want to kind of use the um use the idea of the data jungle to walk through how these things relate to each other and what are some of the things that you your organizations can do to start to more become more effective in your use of data catalogs business glossaries and data dictionaries so um before i get started let's make sure my screen my slides are moving i think they are um just real quickly i want to go through some of the things that i'm working on and this is literally just a, a part of the things that I'm working on, but you know about this monthly webinar series on the third Thursday next month, we'll be talking about unlocking data governance potential through data stewardship. Uh, again, another uh, very relevant topic. I'll be speaking at a dataversity event in December in Washington, DC, the Data Governance and Information Quality East Conference and that is now co-joined with an AI governance conference and a women in data conference as well. I'll be giving two presentations at that event. I'll be doing a tutorial on building an effective AI and data governance joint framework. And I'm also gonna be speaking alongside a client of mine in the federal government space uh, about restructuring and resetting a data governance council. One of the things that you'll hear me talk about a lot is non-invasive data governance. I know Mark had mentioned it. I've written a couple of books on non-invasive data governance, 
And I don't know if I've announced this to you all yet, but there's a third book in the works. So I would see that in 2025, there will be a third non-invasive data governance book. There's also learning plans available through Dataversity. The name of my consulting uh, company is KIK Consulting. KIK stands for Knowledge is King. People ask me if that's my initials. I say, no, my initials are BS. And I didn't want to call myself BS Consulting. And then on, in my spare time, I am also faculty at Carnegie Mellon University here in my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in their executive education program for chief data and AI officers. Um, so those are some of the things that I'm working on. Let's get to the topic at hand today. We want to talk about navigating this data jungle. So we want to put a definition to what I mean by data jungle. In fact, I'm going to share with you some definitions of some terms that I'm going to be using throughout the webinar. But in the first three subjects for the webinar today, I'm going to go through these three metadata tools, the data catalogs, the business glossaries, the data dictionaries. By the way, I love the way Karit talked about how you could actually access those through some of the large language models and just by conversing with these tools. That's a really cool feature that is up and coming within the industry. We'll talk about unlocking the business glossaries. We'll talk about ways to leverage your data dictionary. And then I want to talk about the synergistic impact and I'll define that at that point. Oh, how do we get these things to work together? And how do we make the, um, the sum more than the total of all the parts and, and get the most value out of our catalogs, glossaries, and dictionaries? And then uh, within the time that's remaining, I'm going to share some stories, give you some examples of how some organizations have navigated their data jungle by using their catalog and using their glossary and using their dictionaries. So I want to start out, and I don't want to spend too much time on definitions because we've got a lot of things to talk about today, but I always spend a little bit of time defining data governance because there's a lot of different definitions for data governance. I particularly feel that the definition of data governance has to have some teeth behind it. And a lot of my clients don't like the idea of defining data governance as the execution and enforcement of anything. But the truth is, no matter what approach you take to data governance, if you take a top-down command and control approach, you take a kind of a traditional, if you build it, they will come approach, or you follow the non-invasive approach, at the end of the day, you know, the government isn't coming to you and saying, follow these rules if you'd like. They're telling you that you need to follow these rules. So at the end of the day, you're going to need to execute and enforce authority over the data. Again, it doesn't matter what approach you're taking. That's a, a strongly worded definition for governance, but it's necessary to get people to sit forward in their chairs and understand what data governance truly is to the organization. Stewardship is the formalization of accountability. You've probably heard me say before that potentially anybody who has a relationship to data in the organization that is being held formally accountable for that relationship as a definer or a producer or a user of data, they're a steward of the data. It's not something to opt into or opt out of. Everybody that uses sensitive data needs to know the rules associated with how they can use that sensitive data. So potentially everybody in the organization is a data steward. When I talk about navigating the data jungle, uh, again, I won't read the definition to you here, but it's basically working through all of the, think of this in the terms of a, of a jungle, all the undergrowth, of spreadsheets and systems and, and data and information that are scattered across your organization, the reports, the analytics, all of these things, we need to have a better understanding of the data and we need to have a place to hold that understanding of the data. And that would be the data catalog. So again, we want one of the, again, using the idea of navigating the data jungle, you'll see a lot of things that are kind of jungle related throughout the webinar today. The other definitions I want to share with you, again, not don't want to read them uh, as they are on the screen, but we're going to talk a lot about data catalogs and business glossaries and data dictionaries, and they're all different things. I mean, a data catalog becomes that digital library. I talked about how I, I worked with metadata repositories 
back in, I won't tell you the year that I was working on metadata repositories, but they basically became a digital library and you could store a lot of different types of metadata in it. And two of those types of metadata are the terminology that you'll find in the business glossary part of your data catalog. And then there's this specific reference to data within systems and applications and databases and you know definitions of what the elements and the pieces of data are within your organization. That's the data dictionary. So again, didn't want to spend too much time on the definitions, but at least you understand what I mean by data governance and how I'm kind of differentiating data catalogs from business glossaries and data dictionaries. So the first thing we're going to talk about is demystifying data catalogs. I can tell you that there's a, a lot of organizations that are, um, as they're getting started with the, the whole idea of utilizing a, a, a data catalog, they think that data catalog might be the solution for data for governing data within your organization. Actually, the data catalog is an enabler to the solution of data governance and the stewardship of the data within the organization. It's providing that place for you to keep a digital record of what data your organization has. We'll talk about best practices for selecting the appropriate tool that matches your business requirements. And that's going to be a resounding theme, a resonating theme throughout this whole webinar is why are we doing these things? We're doing these things to solve business problems, to align with business objectives. And we need to make certain from a catalog perspective, from a dictionary, from a glossary perspective, that we're aligning with the things that are going to are going to be important to the business. So we're going to talk about strategies for aligning catalogs and with the business objectives. We'll talk about ensuring quality through your catalog, um, through, through the governance of the metadata that is within the uh, the catalog, and then we'll talk about overcoming some common challenges with the, with the data catalog. So what are some of the things that most organizations are looking to do with their data catalogs? Those things are to, to map out the data terrain, like the terrain within a jungle. You're not going to go walking in a jungle without having an idea of what your data terrain is that's in front of you. That terrain can be changing as you go through rivers and through forests and up hills and, over, and through crevices and things like that. You want to map the data terrain for what it, what it looks like within your organization. You want to identify hidden data treasures. You want to look for those things within your data that are going to add value in terms of making business decisions, of being able to provide better analytics for your data within your organization. You're going to want to help people to understand where the data is coming from. They're not typically going to take data at face value. I've talked about data confidence level. You know, while well, using a data catalog, mapping it to the data terrain, um, knowing where the data came from and where it's going is an important part of getting people to have to raise their confidence in the data and ensuring safe passage with metadata. Again, the more that people understand and have information about the data that they're defining, producing and using, the better they're going to be able to leverage that within their organization. A lot of times organizations, there, there are so many data catalog tools that are available on the market. Some of them are called data catalogs. Some of them go by glossaries, dictionaries, other names. Um, but you really need to have a, a path to selecting the most appropriate tool for your organization. And that means that you need to define the business requirements for metadata, for data within your organization. So you want to make certain that you're aligning the capabilities of the tools that you're evaluating with the things that are required by your business. You want to navigate the vendor options and see what other what vendors are available to you and how they're going to work with you and how they can seamlessly integrate into your environment. So that's what I mean by navigating the vendor options with kind of a non-invasive approach. Uh, preparing the ground for seamless deployment. Well, once you've decided and picked which tool you're going to implement within your environment, um, you need to have that environment set up. You need to work with the technicians in your organization. You need to prepare um, for change management to the software. You need to really control and manage the software within your organization. But doing that in advance is always a, um, always a smart thing to do. 
because you don't want to all of a sudden have a version of a new software that is not prepared to be implanted within your organization. And one of the things too, is just to ensure that these tools that you select are continually adapting, just like uh, Kirit talked about with Metaphor, the, adapt, the adaptation to things like Slack, where you can ask questions of your catalog tool. That wasn't available when I was back, back in the day that I was working with the metadata repositories, um, but it is available now. And, and that might be something that's gonna be very intriguing to your organization. The, the one note that I mentioned that's going to resonate throughout this whole presentation is aligning your catalog with the objectives of your organization. Again, this is really one of the most important things in the organization. So you want to map the business goals, and that means that you need to have a good understanding of what your organization's business goals are. You don't want to implement a data catalog that's not really there to assist anybody towards achieving their business goals. So mapping your business goals to your catalog functionality is really important. Um, using the catalog to illuminate the kind of the key metrics around your data. How, what is the confidence level people have in the data? What data do we have? Where is it? You know, we can, you, you can measure those things within your organization. So many organizations are now looking to leverage their data catalogs leverage their business glossaries and data dictionaries to kind of highlight some of the key business metrics within the organization. Ensuring quality and consistency. Again, don't want to read through all of these, but the idea is that we want to make the data catalog something that's less scary to the organization. For the most part, people have not been used to working with data that they have a lot of information about. So if we're looking to improve the quality or improve the consistency of the data in the organization, we're going to need to work with the business community and get them to truly understand what a data catalog is and where it would benefit them. And I'm going to talk here about in, here in a couple minutes here about how we need to get them involved in the development of the metadata that's going to be housed within the catalog. So using the catalog to navigate data silos and redundancies, there's a lot of redundant data. There's a lot of siloed data within the organization. It's going to be very difficult for people to get the most value out of that data if they don't know what data exists. They don't trust the quality of the data. So again, one way, another way to demystify your data catalog in the implementation of that tool is to help them to understand the true value that comes from a data catalog and how it's going to help with data quality and consistency. And the last thing that I want to talk about in, in demystifying the data catalogs is you know, there's going to be a lot of obstacles to success. I know Karit talked about a lot about how people in organizations that they have data catalogs, but they're not necessarily using them. Perhaps there's a lot of reasons for that. Maybe it doesn't have the appropriate metadata in it. Maybe they don't know how it exists or understand how it's integrated with the things that they do. And maybe they're just resistant to change. There's people that have been doing the same thing in the same way for so long, they don't understand that there's a better way to do things. So again, if we're going to navigate our way through the jungle, we need to address people's resistance to change. We need to ask them why they're not using it. Get some understanding as to, or helping them to understand how this is going to add value to the things that they do. So navigate, you know, overcoming the challenges, there's a complex data ecosystem within your organization, you know, build the processes into the things that people already do to try to avoid disruption. That's one of the whole concepts of staying non-invasive is you don't want to disrupt things that are already taking place. You want to add value to what is taking place. So you're always looking to, um, to, to focus on minimal disruption. That's why I always talk about recognizing people as stewards instead of assigning them as data stewards, because being recognized for something has a positive connotation, but being assigned something immediately feels like it's over and above what you're doing, what they're doing. So again, you want to have minimal disruption within your organization. We need to integrate the data catalog and the use of the data catalog into what people are presently doing and help them to understand the value that's going to come from it. Okay, so I talked about data catalogs for a little bit. I want to spend a, about the same amount of time focusing on business glossaries. 
And business glossaries, as I mentioned earlier in the uh, in the webinar today, they house business terminology. They the, the understanding of the concepts and the language of the business. So they're used to define key business terms within the organization. We're going to talk about how do we align the glossaries with the goals of the organization. Again, that resonating theme throughout the webinar is to make certain that we take these tools and we align them with things that are important to people within the organization. Um, ensuring cross-departmental consistency in the language. That's really when people talk about common business language and they talk about getting people in the organization to use the same terms the same way and to actually be speaking the same language. That's really the goal of implementing a business glossary. Because again, the business glossary focuses on the business terminology. And then I'll talk about here in a couple of minutes, how does that connect to the data dictionary? And then how does the data dictionary connect to the data catalog? Because all these things are working together. They're trying to give people an edge in understanding and getting value out of one of your most important assets, which is the data within your organization. So let's spend a couple of minutes talking about business glossaries. So the, one of the first things, and as I mentioned it before, is to focus on the key business terms in your organization. Um, had, a, had a conversation with a client actually earlier in this week and earlier today as they're building out their business glossary and they seem to be wanting to link it to the data itself. And as I'll show, share with you here in a couple of minutes, there's really a, a path to traverse in order to get from the terminology of the organization down to the data. So you wanna uh, establish a unified language within the uh, in your data jungle. Um, it's kind of funny. I, I looked at this and said, oh, if we're gonna have a unified language, then I, I kind of likened it to Dr. Doolittle and talking to, to, talking to the animals, learning their language, getting to the point where we're establishing a unified language in the data jungle is that's part of the reason why we are implementing a, a list of important business terminology and what the consistent definition of that terminology is across the organization. We want to bridge communication gaps by, again, having a single glossary. But as I'll talk about dictionaries here in a minute, you may find that within your organization, there are already data dictionaries. I had a conversation with a potential client the other day who said, we have no metadata. We have no metadata. I said, do you have a data warehouse? They said, yes. I said, you do have metadata. Uh, do you have data dictionaries? Yes, we have tons of data dictionaries. Well, you do have metadata. What we need to do is make that metadata more valuable and more available and more consumable to the people across the organization. So we're going to define key business terms. We're going to use those terms to get people to work together, empower the stewards through a shared and through a clear vocabulary within the organization. Let's talk about aligning the glossary with the, with the business goals of the organization. Like I said, that's one of the resonating themes of this webinar is why are we creating these tools? Well, we're creating them to help people to get more value from the data. We're, we're creating these tools to help us to achieve the business objectives and the strategies within the organization. So what we want to do is we want to synchronize these glossaries with strategic initiatives. You're implementing a new CRM system. You're developing a new data analytics platform. You're, you're starting to talk about AI and AI governance. Well, we want to make certain that the terminology that we're collecting within the business glossary aligns with those strategic initiatives. We don't want to just create a business glossary for the heck of it and think that people are going to use it. We want to focus on those terms that are misunderstood or that might have different meanings across the organization and get them, get people in the organization to agree. Or if they're not the, if they're, if we can't get them to agree on something, then we need to create separate entries for that within our business glossary so that we understand what they understand the context of the data and the terminology of the data that they're they're looking up. Um, integrate the glossaries with corporate milestones, tailor your glossary to, to reflect the organizational priorities. Again, the resonating theme is 
we want to make certain that as we're unlocking these tools within our organization, that we're linked to those things that are meaningful to the organization. I know in a lot of organizations, people are given the responsibility of creating a business glossary. And I've had clients come to me and tell me that I've now been given the responsibility for creating the business glossary for the organization. And so my first question to them is, do you know the definitions? Do you know the terminology that is going to be necessary to include in your glossary? And they say, no. Well, I said, well, where are you going to get your information? You've got to engage with other people in the organization. I mean, the idea of trying to do this by yourself is uh, doesn't really make sense to a lot of organizations. So get people involved. You can't do it all yourself. In terms of the in terms of the jungle, enlist the natives of your organization. They're the ones that know what terms are important. They're the ones that can help you to provide the business terms. They're the ones that are going to need to agree that the the terms and the definitions of the terms that you're providing make sense and should be shared across the organization. So again, foster stakeholder ownership, you know, leverage cross departmental insights. Don't try to do this on your own. When I said earlier that a data steward potentially can be anybody within the organization, um, you know, make use of those people as you're moving forward. And I'm going to run behind. I, I think I'm, I'm running long here. So I'm going to kind of speed through a couple of these slides. You know, another way to unlock your business glossary to achieve that common language is to maintain and make certain that your um, glossary is maintained and it's updated. I've seen organizations that use old glossaries, that use old dictionaries. People don't have the confidence in the metadata. So we're going to need to make certain that as we are entering terminology into our business glossaries, that we have a way to maintain the, that metadata and keep that metadata up to date. Ensure cross-departmental consistency. Again, one of the things that we're trying to achieve with a business glossary is to get people to speak the same language. Again, to create that common language across the organization. Um, and as I said earlier, if people can't agree, if we have two different definitions for the same term, we don't want to use the same term. We want to change the term. We want to add some context to the term. So that way, when there's variances in the language, we're not going to be disrupting how people are working. That's the whole concept of non-invasive is let's build it into what people do instead of trying to change everything that people do. The next subject that I want to talk about is the, is, uh, the ways to hunt down and, and leverage your data dictionaries. When I defined a data dictionary earlier in the webinar, I mentioned that a data dictionary can be very resource specific. Organizations have data dictionaries specifically for their data warehouse or specifically for their CRM system or specifically for a, an analytical database. Um, we need to um, understand that these things have all been created independently of each other. And it takes some rationalization between the dictionaries to make sense of how this data element is called this in one system and called something different in another system. Even though we're kind of calling it the same thing, they may have different definitions. Once you've implemented a data catalog, that's the opportune time to rationalize the metadata between systems. So let's talk about hunting down the best ways to leverage dictionaries, understand the purpose and the value of dictionaries. Um, there's probably already data dictionaries that exist in your organization in spreadsheets or in word processing documents. But again, they're kind of hidden be, be they're hidden behind the brush, so to speak. We want to bring these things out and make them available through through the data catalog so that people can see how the data is defined in different parts of the organization. I mentioned that I was going to share a diagram that I've used in other webinars, and this is only part of the diagram. If you can see, I typically talk about there being three different levels of metadata. So let's like kind of let's kind of eliminate the one on the top because that's the subject area, that's the domain level uh, metadata. 
But let's talk about when we get to the point where we have specific business terms in the business glossary, like something like an address. And then we, and within a dictionary, we might call them specific things. We might have different uh, names for the data elements that are associated with that business term. And then down in the data catalog, we might actually have physical names for those data elements. Now, if you see in this, in this setup on the right-hand side of the screen, I'm pointing to it, you can't see me pointing to it, but it has the word standard in there. So these, we could have a standard business term. We could have a standard or a standard domain. We could have a standard business glossary term, standard names for data elements within a data dictionary. But if you can see, there's a line pointing off to the right between the business glossary and the data dictionary. In the other webinars that I've given with this as part of the subject area, you'll see that those last two blocks on the bottom, they appear multiple times. We have a data dictionary for this application, a data dictionary for that application. We may call it something different than the standard name, but we want to have record of that. And the physical names of the fields, again, depending on the constraints of the databases, you know, they're going to be different as well. But we might want to have a standard name. So we want to be able to integrate. We want to be able to help our consumers to navigate through the data catalog into uh, navigate through the um, the domains or the subject areas into what are the common terms associated with that subject area into what are the pieces of the specific pieces of data that we have about those business terms and then what they're called within the databases Think about it from an end user perspective. If you're going to go search for data that's going to be viable and usable to you, how are you going to start? You're not going to start with a data element name. You're going to start with something that, that's much more vague, like a, a domain or, or just like a business term within the organization. So when I talk about integrating these tools, you'll find that in the data catalog solution, you need to have the ability to navigate through the data jungle, work your way down from the domains into the subject or into the terms, into the business attributes or the data elements, and then down into the physical, what are we calling these things within the databases? That's going to help people navigate the jungle and get to the data that they need. I could probably spend a whole webinar talking about this slide because this is ultimately really important. Um, if you are counting on people to, um, to, to be there to update your metadata for you when a table changes, when columns change, when definitions change, the chances are you're taking a pretty big risk. You want to build automation into what you're doing. So for an example, and I, I don't want to run out of time here, just to give you an example of, from my younger years, um, we loaded a metadata repository 24 hours a day, seven days a week with metadata. And then we started turning, uh, making it available to people. And they told us that the metadata was not up to date. And so we had to purge everything from the repository and we didn't reload things to the repository until we had a way to assure that when things change, they're going to be reflected within the dictionary, within the catalog, within the glossary of your organization. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the manual effort because whenever you're relying on somebody to do something, there's a possibility that it's not going to be done. So you want to automate the maintenance of your data dictionary. You also want to automate the, the maintenance of your business glossary and your data catalog. Because again, if it's, it's, if it's happening on its own, yes, you want to get reports that things are being updated, but you don't want to manually have to go in and trigger actions in order to keep these three tools that you're using to navigate your data jungle to keep those things up to date link the data dictionaries to business processes. Again, the resonating theme throughout the webinar is keeping people or, or matching the things that we're defining to the things that are happening within the business. And in, uh, enhancing efficiency with dictionaries that link together. I'm used to a term being called this in one database. What is it in the data warehouse? You know, providing that information through these metadata tools is going to be extremely important. Aligning the data definitions with business operations, ensuring consistency across process. Again, these are all things to tie 
the use of these tools to what's important to your organization. And you're now trying to avoid some of those common pitfalls in data dictionary usage. You know, when there are multiple data dictionaries and people need to go to a spreadsheet here and a Word document there and a team site somewhere else, you know, the data dicks, the whole concept of data dictionary becomes very difficult to them. Where do I go to get the information I need? That's why organizations are implementing those centralized repositories, those centralized catalogs to kind of keep all of your data dictionaries within the data catalog, to keep all of your business terminology within the data, uh, within the data catalog, to have a record of what your physical databases and tables look like. You know, we're going to keep that within the catalog itself. So we're going to, uh, one of the common pitfalls of dictionary usage is we just have so many dictionaries, or maybe people don't know that there's any dictionaries. Again, using a data catalog tool to help to share those with people becomes really important. It helps you to avoid some of the common myth, uh, pitfalls in the usage of a data dictionary. And I want to talk about integrating these tools. So I talked about that a little bit uh, a couple of minutes ago, where you've got those three levels of metadata. You've got the, the business domains on top of those. Um, my suggestion is you kind of pull those, those things all together. And I want to share with you quickly how you can do that possibly through a data governance framework. So when I said synergistic impact, this is what I mean, is they pulling these things to get together where the, the value of the team is, is more valuable than any of the individual contributions of its member. So it's bringing two or more elements combined to produce a greater effect for your organization. So I have talked about in the past, in these webinars, I've talked about my data governance framework. And I'm going to use the framework here as a way to be able to align glossaries and dictionaries across the organization and show you where within the framework it might be something that you want to consider. So speaking of data governance frameworks, this is the non-invasive data governance framework that I shared within the second book that I talked about earlier. Um, there's a description of what the framework is. There's some exciting news that's going to be announced about the framework coming up in December at the DGIQ East conference. Also, there will be an additional learning plan available through Dataversity that talks about data governance frameworks and how to use them. But just real quickly, those things across the top of the framework are those core components of a successful governance program as understood and viewed at the different levels of the organization. And so there's a lot of information behind this, this uh, data governance framework. But what I want to do is I want to highlight within the framework those places where the data catalog, the glossary, and the dictionary come into play. So when we think about tools that are going to be utilized by people within the organization, you'll find that these tools are mo most often the responsibility and are used by people at the tactical, kind of the cross-business function level and at the operational level within the business functions. So when we're utilizing a data governance framework, this is where some of those these tools that I'm talking about would fit into the overall framework. And now the interesting thing about it is that's not the only place in the framework that, that we're really documenting information about our organization, about our organization's data. We want to have data and meaningful data and meaningful assistance to people that are using the data at all of the different levels of the organization, at the executive strategic all the way down to the support level. So stay tuned for more information about the, the data governance framework and look for the learning plan coming soon uh, through Dataversity. But we want to make certain that we're kind of unifying these things together. We're using them in cohesion with each other kind of like an, an elaborate orchestra where we're orchestrating not only the technical metadata, but the mi business metadata and making it valuable to people across the organization. We want to use these tools to kind of map the relationships. So we want to identify the overlaps and the gaps in the metadata that you have across your organization. As I said, I had a, cli a potential client telling me we had they had no metadata. I started asking them, do they do data modeling? Do they have databases? Ethics? And so they, they quickly came to realize that they do have metadata. They have a lot of metadata. It's just that it's hidden behind walls that people can't get to. 
So one of the things I always tell my clients to inventory their data assets, inventory your metadata assets as well. See what metadata already exists with your organization. See the metadata that people want to make the most use of. Just like you're providing tools to somebody who's navigating a jungle, you want to understand what you have and what's valuable that you can make available to people. So you need to identify the overlaps or the gaps in metadata across your organization. And that's not going to happen on its own. It's going to require that people take the opportunity to really research and inventory what types of metadata you have across your organization. And then map the linkages between the terms and the data assets. I mentioned earlier that a client is trying to do that now. They're trying to take their terminology and their business glossaries and give people direct links to data based on the business terms. And I'm telling them that there might be a step or two between going from a business term straight to the data assets. We need to know if that business term is represented in multiple places, where is the appropriate place to send people to get the data that they need? So mapping the relationships between catalogs, glossaries, and dictionaries is a very important piece of being successful, of navigating this data jungle that many organizations have. Streamline data management through integration. So again, making certain that these tools are not just independent islands of metadata, that they're integrated, that they're working together Use the fact that we're going to start with business terminology, get into specific elements that, that are about that those terms that we put in our glossary, and then give people the direct knowledge as to where that data exists within the organization so that they can start to leverage it. Enhance discoverability and usability. Isn't that the reason why we're collecting this metadata? We want to make it apparent to people that this metadata exists and that they can use these tools to go and get access to the data that they need to perform their job functions. Let, and help people to leverage these tools for better decision making. I'm kind of going to jump through this to get to the last subject that I wanted to share with you. And then I want to spend a few, uh, leave a few minutes for questions and answers at the end uh, as well. I just want to give you some examples of somehow how some of the organizations that I have worked with have leveraged the use of their data catalog and their glossaries and their dictionaries to improve the value of data in their organization and to navigate the data jungle. So let's first talk about a financial institution. Again, don't want to read through all of these. I could, could share a little bit about each of these lines, but I think it'll be easier just to walk through them. You know, this organization had a lot of data silos. Does that sound familiar? They implemented a catalog to enhance their people's knowledge of what data existed and how to get access to the data. They drove organizational change through building data governance into the things that people did rather than coming with a top-down, heavy-handed approach to data governance. Leverage the glossary for consistent terminology, realize tangible benefits from you know, their data management is, initiatives. They found that the better the metadata, the more, the, the more smoothly the different initiatives and projects took place in the organization. Some of the lessons they learned, they aligned the tools with the organizational goals, something that I've mentioned over, over and over again in the webinar. They overcame challenges in integrating the glossaries to the dictionaries, to the data catalog. They Improve, they ensured improve, uh, continuous improvement by giving people the ability to pro provide feedback on the metadata, especially metadata that's not just physical metadata. We need to get people to concur or at least take a look at the metadata and provide feedback. So having those continuous loops is important. Measuring the success in the ROI from implementing these tools in conjunction with each other is important as well. Some of the key success factors, they established clear ownership and accountability. Again, my definition of data stewardship is formalized accountability for the management of data. Fostered a culture of stewardship. Again, don't want to read through all of these, but the idea is these are the things, these are kind of the key success factors in them navigating the data jungle by using their glossaries, dictionaries, and data catalogs. They demonstrated tangible business value through data governance, improved decision-making by giving people access to the appropriate metadata that was going to help them 
to, to do their job, to make effective decisions, to kind of navigate through the data to get to the data that they specifically need to help them with their jobs. And one thing that it just seems to be talked about in many organizations is the implementation of data governance strategies or just data strategies in general. We need to make certain that these data strategies that are being put together include metadata management, include governance, not only of data, but also of AI and governance of the metadata itself too. We don't want to do metadata and these tools is not a one shot deal. It's something that's gonna require um, consistent and persistent um, attention within the organization. So if we're looking to future-proof our data governance strategy or future-proof our data strategy, we want to make certain that we incorporate those things into the strategy that are going to add value to people. And that will really help us to avoid all of these creatures, or at least some of them that we want to avoid, and to navigate the data jungle. So with that, I know I spent a lot of time going, uh, I spent um, a lot of time on subjects, went through some subjects quickly. The things that I talked about were the catalog, the glossary, and the dictionary, and how we can make those incredibly valuable tools to help us to navigate through that jungle, which is what our data in many organizations appears to be right now. It seems to be a jungle. We need to make certain that people understand what data we have how they can leverage it, um, how we can integrate these tools and, and make the sum of the tools more valuable than just each of the individual parts. And then I share with you some quickly some examples of how organizations have succeeded in navigating the data jungle using these tools. And Mark, I know I went a little bit long here, but uh, do we have any questions today? We've got a lot of questions and chat's been very active. Uh, and we got a couple of hot minutes to to dive into some, and when we've got some of my favorite questions uh, in the Q and A, and and I know you've uh, dealt with this topic a little bit already, Bob, but uh, let's rehash for for a hot second for organizations that are just beginning with data governance and don't yet have a system to capture a data glossary or data dictionary. What's the best way to start? Should we begin by building it in Excel or another simple tool? Additionally, would you recommend starting by department, by use case, or in small increments? What would be the best practical step <laughs> to ensure a scalable and organized approach? That's a great question. That's a, very it's a fantastic long, question. It's a, it's a long question, too. Um, so my first answer to that question is, yes, you need to get started. You need to record that metadata somewhere, especially if you're thinking about acquiring a cat, acquiring any of these tools, you're going to want to have some of that information documented. So doing it in a spreadsheet, doing it in a Word document, my only suggestion is the way that you're presently collecting metadata, whether it is that spreadsheet or that document, is be consistent in the way that you go about collecting that metadata. So when the time comes that you may have a tool, it's going to be easier for you to take that existing metadata and ingest it into the tool. You can write scripts to ingest the metadata, but if it's different, you're going to be writing different scripts for different metadata. So the first suggestion is get started. Start recording the metadata somewhere. You can write it on the back of a napkin. That's not the best place to store your metadata. <laughs> but you've been storing it in a spreadsheet and being consistent in the way that you're collecting the metadata before you even have a tool is a really is a brilliant way to start. Yeah, I, I did. I did get a DM from chat that says, please no data governance by spreadsheet. And I, and I can <laughs> I can empathize with that quite a bit. Uh, well, but, but I if do... you don't have another tool, well, you exactly. want to record that somewhere. And, and a spreadsheet is just like a database. Okay, record it in a database, but write it down. It doesn't become valuable until it's recorded somewhere. It doesn't become usable until it's recorded somewhere. So I saw exactly. Mike's note about no spread governance by spreadsheet. I do yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that's not going to be the way that you want to go long term. But if you're just getting started, that's the first step is getting started and then having a consistent way to be able to collect the business terms, the data dictionaries, the data catalog. You know, you'll eventually hopefully be able to scan your or parse your physical databases and get that structure. You don't need to enter that or, or keep record of that somewhere else. But the mm -hmm. the, the more business terminology and business descriptions, 
yeah, you got to get started and then a spreadsheet might be a good way to go. Reed, do you have any thoughts on that uh, topic? Well, speaking as a tool vendor, I would say get a tool. <laughs> but uh, I would also say, uh, yeah, maybe avoid spreadsheets. However, I, you know, we do realize that that happens a lot, and we, we, you know, certainly within our tools, we uh, give people the opportunity to sort of like update uh, or you know, you know, pull in data from spreadsheets. Uh, we we actually you know if people maintain their own wikis for example you know come, uh, SharePoint Notion what have you we can actually go out and scan those as well and bring that in so you don't have to do that manual labor yourself. Nice. Um, actually, <laughs> that's all we have time for. We're coming right we're right at the end of the hour here. So thank you, Kiri. Thank you, Bob, for this wonderful presentation. I I wish we had more time for QA, but that's all we have time for today. Just to remind yeah. everybody, we will be posting the recorded webinar and slides to dataversity.net within a couple of business days, and we'll send a follow-up email to let you know the links to anything else that was requested. Thanks again for attending today's webinar, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thanks again, Kirit and Bob. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.